to me, cod is like the boneless, skinless chicken of the sea because it has a mild flavor that really benefits from a recipe that packs a punch. A lot like a Moroccan fish tagine, which is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. Now, I like serving tagine with a little bit of rice in the bottom of the bowl to catch that sauce. So I have some basmati cooking in the rice cooker back there. And the other thing about a tagine is there's one key ingredient that you have to include, and that's preserved lemons. Now you can buy preserved lemons at a nice, well-stocked market. You can make them, although it takes a few weeks for them to marinate and ferment. Or you can use this really quick recipe I'm about to show you. It takes only 24 hours for the lemons to really soften, and they can hold for up to two weeks. All right, so here I have two lemons, and I already washed them. Washing the lemons is crucial because you're gonna use the skins as well, so you want them to be nice and clean. And I'm gonna trim off the edge here. I'm gonna use a mandolin to slice them as thinly as possible. Now really, you can't slice them thinly enough by hand. Just gonna slice these nice and thin. They're gonna start to break apart and that's okay. And watch your fingers. All right, here I have all these lemon slices. To this, we're gonna add three tablespoons of sugar. Now, sugar is not a traditional ingredient in preserved lemons, but in quick preserved lemons, it really helps mitigate that acidity. We're gonna add some salt, three tablespoons, of table salt, and last but not least, some olive oil. Now, olive oil is also not traditional, but that oil will help soften the skins overnight. So that was three quarters of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Stir this around, get it really nicely combined. So I'm just gonna take the lemons and pack them into the jar. Now we do have a recipe for traditional preserved lemons that take about eight weeks to ferment in the fridge, and you can find that on our website. So here are some preserved lemons that are ready to go. And we only need two tablespoons of these chopped up that we're gonna add to the pot. A little goes a long way with these guys. Just gonna chop these up nice and fine. Yeah, that looks like two tablespoons. Might be a bit heavy, but I like the flavor. Set that aside. Now let's work on the vegetables. There aren't a lot of vegetables going into this tagine. Just an onion, a bell pepper, and a carrot. So we're gonna cut these all the same way, lengthwise into nice strips. We're gonna start with the onion. Cut it in half, and that's when I like to peel it. So I'm gonna slice off that root end, and now I'm just gonna slice all the way around, pole to pole, but I'm gonna angle the knife as I go. Now when I get about halfway, I like to tip that onion back on its other side, it's just easier. That's an onion. On to the bell pepper. Now, to do the bell pepper, I'm gonna cut off the top and the bottom, save those, we're gonna use them. Slice down through one side, and then open it up. And that's when you can easily take out the core and all those seeds. Then we're gonna go in and trim away some of those ribs using a knife. Now this is when your fingers get in the way a little bit, so just be careful. All right, so now that I have these flat pieces of pepper, it's easy to cut them into nice thin strips. Now for the tops and the bottoms, I don't like wasting anything. So I'm just gonna slice them as well. Last but not least, one carrot, which we're also gonna slice thin. Of course, you have to peel it first. Put the carrot on a solid surface of board. It makes it really easy to peel really quickly. For the carrot, we're gonna cut it on the bias so the carrots have a nice elongated shape. And that's it. Last but not least, I have a third of a cup of green pitted olives. And it's these two ingredients, the green olives and the preserved lemon, that are the classic flavorings in any tagine. Here I have a third of a cup of pitted green olives. And if you can find picholine olives or serignola, those have amazing flavor. But really, any good looking green olive will work well. So now I'm just gonna cut these into quarters. All right, with all the veg prep done, time to focus on the star of the show, the cod. So here I have one and a half pounds of cod. Oh, look at this beauty. Now this is a beautiful filet. Not a lot of prep we have to do here. It's already boneless and skinless. We're just gonna cut it up into nice stew-sized pieces, about an inch and a half to two inches. Cut it lengthwise, and then cut it into nice big chunks. The only prep we need to do to this fish is to season it with a little salt. This is half a teaspoon of table salt. And that salt's gonna do two things. It's gonna season the fish, but it's also gonna help that fish stay moist during cooking. We just need to let this fish sit while we start. A really important part of this recipe, it's a spice paste known as a chermoula that's gonna give the fish a lot of flavor. And the first ingredient is cilantro. You wanna go for about half a cup and we wanna use mostly the leaves and the tender stems. You don't want the thicker stems because you want this to be a pretty smooth paste. So I'm gonna add this cilantro right to the food processor. 
Next, I'm gonna add four garlic cloves. And these are the ones that are already peeled, which I really love. Now we're gonna add the spices, and these spices are what makes the tagine really have flavor. We're gonna add a teaspoon and a quarter of cumin, teaspoon and a quarter of paprika, last but not least, a little cayenne, just a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm gonna put the lid on. We're gonna pulse this until it's finely chopped, eh, about 12 pulses or so. Next in, one about a tablespoon and a half of fresh lemon juice. I like to squeeze it right into the food processor. Ooh, this is a good juicy lemon. Mm, looking good. Last ingredient is some extra virgin olive oil, just two tablespoons. And I'm not gonna add it to the food processor with the blade spinning, because that can make that oil taste a little bitter. Instead, I'm gonna take it off and just add it by hand. When you're all done, this is what the charmoula looks like. It's finely minced, glistening with the oil and the lemon juice, and it has a wonderful fragrant smell. All right, we're gonna set that aside. It is time to start cooking the tagine. And what I have here is a Dutch oven heating up over medium heat with a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil in it. And that oil is starting to shimmer, so it's a perfect time to add the vegetables. Add them to the pot along with a little salt, just a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're just gonna let these cook for five minutes or so until they soften. Now the word tagine actually refers to two things. First, it is the cooking method where everything is cooked gently together in a pot so it all gets flavored at once. Second, it is the traditional cooking vessel. It has that iconic look with that big lid. And if you have one of those, by all means, you should substitute it for the Dutch oven. These vegetables are nicely softened and it's time to add some tomatoes. Now this is a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. And we're gonna add it with the juice. That juice is gonna add nice liquid to the sauce. In go the green olives. Last but not least, we're gonna add the preserved lemons. Now, a lot of recipes have you add the lemons at the end for a fresh flavor, but because this cooks so quickly, we found it nice to add them to the pot. That way it allows their flavor to bloom and really permeate through the sauce. All right, so here's the fish, and now we're gonna add the tremula to it. We're gonna coat the fish with this nice, flavorful paste, and you really wanna do this at the last minute because you don't want the paste to start to marinate the fish. You just want it to flavor the fish during cooking. All right, so we're just gonna put this cod on top of its bed of vegetables. You wanna put them in a single layer. You don't wanna stack the cod on top of one another. I'm gonna scrape out any of the tremula left in the bowl because we want all that flavor in the pot. All right, medium heat. We're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let this cook for three to five minutes until it just starts to turn opaque and the juices come out and start to bubble around the edges. This fish has been cooking for about four minutes. Time to take a look under the lid. Oh, you can see all that liquid that's come out of the cod and it's making a lovely sauce with all that juice from the canned tomatoes. No reason to add any water or broth here. There's plenty of liquid in the fish. That looks perfect. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm actually gonna let the fish finish cooking off the heat. And that is key to ensuring that the fish doesn't overcook and start to fall apart. And the way you know the fish is perfectly cooked is that it registers about 140 degrees on a thermometer. So this fish has been cooking off the heat for about four minutes. Again, we're looking for a temp of about 140. 140, good to go. Now you don't want this to sit around. You wanna be able to serve it pretty much as it finishes cooking. One last prep, a little bit of cilantro for the top. So there is a bowl with the rice waiting. Oh, nice big chunks of cod. And this juice is one of the best parts of the tagine. I like to drizzle it right over the top and let it soak down into the rice. All right, little bit of bright cilantro on top. It's that easy. Now for a taste. Oh, the cod. I love it that it holds together, but as soon as you put your fork to it, it starts to fall apart. Mmm has so much flavor. I'm gonna dive down into that rice now, pick up some vegetables. The carrots in this, some of the best carrots you'll ever have. Mm. Mm. So if you wanna make Moroccan fish tagine, remember three things. First, use some preserved lemons. You can make them or you can buy them. Second, be sure to make your own charmoula with lots of cilantro and a few spices. And last, cook the fish off the heat so it doesn't turn tough. From America's Test Kitchen at Home, a great recipe for Moroccan fish tagine.
Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.